Let's say we want to create an interrupt that triggers at a rate of 5 hertz. So every 0.2 seconds, an interrupt is generated and we do something in that routine. So now this in, in uh, nanoseconds is 200 million nanoseconds. And we know that the peripheral bus clock is running at 80 hertz. So that means each clock pulse is every 12.5 nanoseconds. So if we divide that, we see that we want an interrupt to be generated every 16 million peripheral bus clock pulses. Now we want to turn that into a prescaler and a period register for timer one so that it will roll over after 0.2 seconds and create that interrupt. So let's say that we choose a prescaler of 256. And this is going to be a, a good choice that we'll see in a moment. Then that means the prescaler is only going to create uh, one pulse to the counter every 256 uh, peripheral bus clock pulses. So now if we take 16 million peripheral bus clock ticks, divide by 256, then we get 62,500. And 256 was a good choice because our counter can only count up to about 65,000, so this is right near the limit. So that means we're going to set up, we're going to use timer one in this example, we're going to set up timer one to have a prescaler of 256, and then a period register to have a value so that it rolls over after or every 62,500 counts of the counter. So let's take a look at that program. Okay, so here's our interrupt service routine here. Um, we're using the timer one vector. If we look that up in the table in the interrupt section, we see that that's uh, interrupt vector four. So we could just say four here instead of using this constant. And we're going to use priority level 5 and software context save and restore. Uh, once we enter this interrupt service routine, all we do is we toggle one of the bits of port A that corresponds to an LED on the NU32. And then we clear the interrupt flag, and that's all the interrupt service routine does. So your light will become, the LED will be coming on or will be changing its state five times a second. Okay, so let's continue down into the, the main function. So uh, again, the first thing we do is we disable interrupts. The next thing here, we're going to set the prescaler of timer one. So remember, step three is setting up the uh, peripheral or the device to uh, generate interrupts on the conditions that we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to first set the bits of that T1 con register that control the prescaler so that we choose a uh, prescaler of 256. So this is. PS equals 256 happens in this line here. Uh, the next line is controlling what the source is for the timer. So this is source is equal to the peripheral bus clock. Remember, if this was a one, then the source would be an external input. Now here we set the period register equal to 62,499. Now we calculated 62,500, but remember the count starts at zero. So we count from zero, we go up to 62,499, and the next time the, the counter gets another input pulse, it will go back to zero. So zero to 62,499, make sure that we're getting uh, 62,500 um, uh, peripheral bus clock pulses, uh, I'm sorry, um, outputs from the prescaler be between every rollover. Okay, So that makes sure now we have 256 times 62,500 or 16 million um, peripheral bus clock pulses between every rollover. Then the last thing we do here is we turn on the timer to start counting. And then the rest of this is the usual interrupt setup procedure. So here in step four, we're going to set the priority of the interrupt to five, just to agree with our interrupt service routine earlier. Uh, Sub-priority is zero. We're going to clear the interrupt flag, so we haven't requested an interrupt yet. Then we're going to enable the timer to start creating interrupts. And now we're going to turn the CPU back on uh, to start 
processing interrupts. So all this program does is sets up timer one, so it's going to uh, create an interrupt five times a second. 